Okay guys, this is the brand new Artly Play 4. It's a new home theater projector that retails around 400 pounds. Take a look at the description to see the latest pricing information because they do run some offers from time to time. And also have a look at my exclusive discount code for you guys so you can get this cheaper than anyone else. Let's go ahead and open the box and see what's inside. Okay, so you have your power plug, HDMI to HDMI cable, some cleaning kit and a microfiber cloth, user manual, and the remote control. Let's just take a quick look at the remote. You'll notice there's some on-demand buttons here for streaming services, set Netflix and Prime Video. This is because this has Android 10 TV built into it, which is, I think, a great thing to have, especially with a projector in this price range. You can also use the Google Voice Assistant to run various different commands, and we'll be testing that out as well to see how well this works with that button there in the middle. Everything else is pretty standard, requires two AAA batteries, You'll notice there's a little device that also comes in the box here, it's this little square. This is actually what the Android TV is built into. Before you can start using the projector, it comes opened up on one of the sides. This is where you'll have to slot this with these two cables that are just hanging out there. So the one on the left is a micro USB cable and the one on the right is a very mini micro HDMI. So you'll have to connect this, put that there and put the vent slot back in and then you're ready to start using it. It comes with a instruction manual as well as a first step before you can start using it. So you just need to make sure you plug the TV box into the correct link ports and then you'll be ready to turn it on. So let's go ahead and do that first. You can push the cables back in like so and it just slots into place and then you can put the cover back on there we go everything is in place and now we're ready to start using this let's go ahead and look at the design before we turn this on and then we'll get started okay so on the top of the projector you can see with the buttons here it's got this nice little remote control design to control everything you've got your focus but adjustment buttons there power button back button and then your directional buttons there so the ports on the back you have two HDMI ports, two USB ports, a headphone port and the power port just there with the infrared receiver on the right side there. This is where the TV box was and you'll notice there's some speakers on the left hand side there. You've got two speakers, one there and one there. And then on the front you have yourself the full HD 1080p lens for the projector and it has a lens cap. So overall quite a nice design. So let's go ahead and set this up. I'm going to project this at around 100 inches, which is probably the most recommended for the best settings to get the full HD experience. So let's go ahead and see what this can do, run through all of the options, the Android TV, and see how the video and audio quality is. I just wanted to run through some of the key specifications. This is a 1080p native projector, but it supports up to 4K resolution. And it is 400 ANSI lumens, which I think is a very good level of brightness, especially if you wanted to use this maybe in daylight. I have a lot of daylight coming into the room right now and as you guys can still see on the screen it is still pretty clear i've got this projected at around 100 inches which i think is probably the best amount to have to get the most clarity in your images but this can go all the way up to 224 inches if you wanted to get a very large cinematic experience one thing I really look for in every projector, and I mention this all the time, is automatic focus and keystone. That's very key, especially if you wanted to position your projector in various different places, in different angles. So as an example, I'm just gonna move this around and you'll see it will automatically go into focus and keystone itself. And of course, in the settings, you have the option to adjust it manually if you feel like it hasn't done it absolutely perfectly. And I'll run into the options in a second. This also has Dolby Audio, so I think that's a really good thing to have, especially if you don't want to connect to any external speakers, you need to have really good quality audio coming from the projector itself, especially audio that would drown out any fan noise. As you can probably hear, there's a little bit of fan noise coming from the projector. This is the case with pretty much every projector of this size. But once you start playing some content, a movie or a TV show, I promise this will drown out the fan noise and it wouldn't interrupt your viewing experience. This also has Android TV built into it and I'm going to showcase all of the different apps and the capabilities of it. Because this is an Android projector, this also has Chromecast built in and I'm going to showcase using my Google Pixel how easy it is to screen mirror wirelessly my phone to the projector using the Chromecast built into it. 
Using the settings from this OS, you can see at the top here, this also has mirror cast and iOS cast if you wanted to, you know, maybe mirror your iPhone or your iPad and also any other Android phone, which is not a Google phone using this setting here. And finally, as I showed earlier, you do have the Google Voice Assistant built into the remote control. So I'll test that out to see if I can open some apps with that and maybe just showcase various different commands. A whole bunch of specifications, which I think is absolutely great. And this makes this a very nice projector. I'm gonna go into the settings here, and this is very common settings for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. If I go into projection settings, the keystone here wasn't quite exact how I'd like it. So I'm gonna go into the manual keystone and I'm just gonna adjust it slightly so it looks a little bit straight and it has a four point keystone correction and I think that will look good for me so I will go back and if you wanted to do any manual focus then you can also adjust it from there as well you can do system updates change settings like firmware language reset and all this kind of stuff and then you also have the options to connect to HDMI from here. Or if you add a USB, then you can also play back movies, music, photos, and documents if you wanted to use this for business purposes. So let's go back to Android TV. So here you can see everything. This is based on the Android OS system and you can download as many apps as you like from the Google Play Store. So I've got Netflix and YouTube set up. I can download Disney Plus. You've got some featured movies and TV shows that you can browse through. You can customize your own channels and pretty much everything you expect from Android TV. Let's go ahead and go into add apps. I can add Disney Plus to my favorites. I'll go ahead, add the Play Store, and then I'll add Prime Video as well. You can also go into the full list of apps and get more apps from here. Go into the Play Store, and pretty much there's thousands of different apps that you can use to find the content that you want to watch. As I'm using the remote control, by the way, this is actually very responsive. I'm not finding any lag. It's very quick. I don't need to point it directly at the projector either. And one thing I really like about this is I'm going to be using this remote at a distance and I don't want to be able to just find the exact infrared port to point it at before I can actually register my command. So that's just a nice thing I thought I'd mention as well. Okay, so now let's test out the Google Voice Assistant. So I'm just gonna press this button once on the remote. It will pop up on the screen with the voice command and you just have to speak into the remote. So I'm going to do that now. What is the weather in Los Angeles, California? Currently in Los Angeles, California, United States, it's eight degrees and clear. Today, it'll be mostly sunny with a forecast high of 23 and a low of eight. Okay. Now I'll go back, I'll press it again, and this time I will do some voice commands related to the content on the screen. Play Stranger Things on Netflix. All right, opening Netflix. And as you can see, it went straight in. That was very quick and easy. I'll just do one more test. I'll go back home, press the button. Play The Mandalorian on Disney Plus. All right, opening Disney Plus. There you go. Very quick and easy. And just having this voice command on the remote control, I just think it makes the projector and whole experience a little bit more premium, which I'm very keen on and a big fan of. So that works very well. The next thing I also want to try is the inbuilt Chromecast and see how well that works for testing out the wireless screen mirroring from my Android phone. So on my Google Pixel, I go into settings, connected devices, preferences, cast, and it pops up with this menu here. It's called the Heiko Mini. I just need to select this and you'll notice as soon as I hit start now, watch the screen behind the phone. There you go, it's now mirroring very quickly and easily. So you'll see the responsiveness, very minimal amount of latency, but that's kind of expected when you do have Wi-Fi mirror casting like this. Let's go ahead and play maybe a YouTube video. This is one of the videos I've created on the Artly Play portable model. It can go full screen like this. 
and you can see very minimal leg but it actually plays very smoothly on the screen itself volume comes directly from the projector as long as you have the volume full on the phone so it's a very quick and easy way for you to screen share anything you want on your phone directly to the Artly Play 4. So I'm quite impressed with the way Chromecast works. I had no problems doing it from the very first time and it just works straight away out of the box. There we go, very quick and easy and I'm super happy with that. I can disconnect just by going to disconnect and that will take me back to the Android home screen. So now let's go ahead and test out some of the video demos. I'm going to play a couple of clips. Make sure you try to listen with some headphones because how I hear it and how you guys hear it might be two slightly different things. But hopefully this will give you an idea of how loud and how punchy the Dolby Audio is with the two 5 watt speakers inbuilt into the Artly Play 4. And make sure to remember that how I also see the video quality might be more improved of how I'm seeing it in person but hopefully this will give you a clear idea on both of those scenarios. I'm now going to go ahead and close all my shutters to make it very dark in this room and hopefully this will give you a good idea of the quality and I'll give you my final thoughts right at the end. So let's go ahead and get started. This is Dolby Cinema. It's where the most advanced cinematic technology you've ever experienced begins. This is Dolby Atmos. The number of speakers around you no longer matters because this is the world's first object-based cinematic audio. With powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Soundscape sits the mood of the scene. Whoa! What is this place? Whoa! Come on, you guys, let's go! Or captures the full extent <laughs> of nature's fury. this it's just the beginning of dolby vision because what you thought was black isn't this is black this is contrast that reveals details deeper than any image you've seen on a screen this is luminance that means the difference between white and pure energy energy that is about to reveal an entire universe of color you've never experienced in the cinema.
Okay, there you have it. So my final thoughts on this. Generally, I've been pretty impressed with Artly projectors in the past, having already reviewed the Enjoy 3 and the Portable Play, and it's no real exception to this Play 4. For the video quality, it's pretty much exactly what you'd expect from a home theatre system from this price range. The 400 ANSI lumens makes the image bright enough to use in various lighting conditions in your environment, and when it's dark in the room, you really get to see the vibrant colours and sharp details with FHD and UHD content. That's key to making your home theatre viewing experience feel more cinematic. In terms of audio, yes, it does have Dolby audio, which is the 2D audio not to be confused with Dolby Atmos, which is more immersive 3D audio. But alongside the dual 5 watt speakers, the audio does get pretty loud at max volume. And although it's clear to hear dialogues, I would always recommend using Bluetooth to connect projectors to external speakers or a soundbar just to get the best listening experience overall. But more than anything, I would always value projectors that have inbuilt streaming services into it because it saves you from having to always connect another HDMI device like a Fire Stick or an Apple TV box. So if I was going to spend up to £400 on a projector, I would definitely expect it to have Android TV built into it. So that's one of the reasons why I would say this is a very great buy. It's packed with a lot of features as I've already shown. But additionally, it works as a great TV replacement too. And you could even set up your gaming consoles on this and really have this as your all-in-one home cinema solution. So I hope you found this review useful, guys. If I've missed anything else you'd like to know, as always, drop a comment down below. Make sure to like the video if you found it helpful in deciding if this projector is the one for you. And make sure to subscribe for many more projector and tech reviews I have coming out every week. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.